Excellent. All right, welcome everyone to the Inside Fish and Metasploit Sprint Demo for February 6, 2018. All right, starting off, uh, just uh, review some stats. The open pull requests in Framework, it looks like uh, we had a slight uptick up until about January 22nd. And then over the last week or two, uh, we've started to consume and land those pull requests. So it's a nice little uh, downward trend there, which is good. Leveled out, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Top committers, as usual, we got Brent Cook at the top of the list. Uh, zero <coughs> Sum, Will Vu, Carter Brainard are following behind there. Wei Chen as well. In two places. Hey, yeah, you do show up twice. Two places. So when you add them together, what do you get? They're busy. It's just one on the other one. Ah, yeah. one on the other one. Yeah, Zero Sum hooked us up with some eternal goodness uh, this time around. That was nice. But yeah, big thanks to everybody, all the contributors. Yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate your contributions. Oh, just as a side note, uh, Google, Summer of Code, this is where we get some intern-like folks to come and participate. And the way that it works is... Uh, you've got to submit an application. So Metasploit recently submitted uh, our application, and the announcement for acceptance will be this coming Monday, January the 12th. So yay, fingers crossed. February. Or February 12th, rather. Sorry. Cool. Recently, things that have landed uh, under the code execution Exploit category, uh, the big one, this is what, what uh, Pierce was alluding to a while ago. This would be MS17010, the eternal synergy. Uh, just as a side note, there were many, many verification steps, and a lot of folks pitched in to land that one. Just <coughs> want to thank everybody uh, who did that. Yeah, yeah. Also landed the Oracle WebLogic server, as well as Kaltura. Did some BMC server automation, and Dupe Scout Enterprise. Yay. And to continue on with that, uh, the shark, I don't know how to pronounce this, but the Sharkinade TNTO, Sharkinado uh, landed. This is around the uh, ATT UVerse routers, Got gather modules, uh, the SSL lab scan. Yeah, there was an update to that, too, uh, if I might, made that yeah. uh, Brent made to allow it to work with the, their updated API and then also be more resilient in the face of adversity, uh, not not completely giving up the ghost, but selling forth to provide the value that it can based on changes that have happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also had some local exploit modules landed around privilege escalation. <laughs> privilege <laughs> escalation. I apologize. You Thank you. Uh, app port and the automatic bug reporting tool. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the set UID and map shell support was also landed. Yeah, thanks to Will. Thank you, Will. As we continue on, some denial of service uh, attack module. This would be under the deb debut web server brother printers, uh, the, the check VM post module, uh, POSIX interpreter process hiding, and the target bind port. As some enhancements. Yeah, we actually did, we demoed print demoed last time the public server process hiding, but it, we did, didn't make the bullet list so because it was kind of in there last minute, so it's on the list this time. All right, and we've got some fixes around proxy auth, uh, which is related to the Windows interpreter reverse TCP, uh, the info slash D, or rather dash D, and the pivot handler packet forwarding. So lots of stuff that has been landed. All right, things in the works. Uh, denial of service around the Claymore dual GPU miner. Uh, the Alteria server directory traversal, which I believe is a remote uh, file exploit. Yeah, that's coming from our, our new moose, uh, Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, welcome, Jacob. Hey, hey, Thank hey. you for that PR. Yeah. Also, some uh, expand pass from interpreter. Uh, some documentation. We're always uh, glad to see some work around documentation. So this would be a generator tool for that. The Magnicompsys. Info, privilege es escalation. Ooh, the robot scanner for Blackenbacker uh, around Oracle. Also uh, in the works is some Ruby SMB client uh, for getting the SMB simple client working, as well as the Juju Run agent privilege escalation module and the x64 stager for Mac OS. 
All right, having said that, um, now on to the individual uh, team's updates. Uh, yeah, we'll call them out. Yeah, is there anybody. anyone on the Dharma Initiative who would like to speak to these? Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that was landed was landed by us, uh, including a lot of the eternal stuff and the fun stuff with the uh, Ulterius uh, directory traversal. A um, couple things to note on the in progress, uh, both the outstanding robot scanner, uh, which was written by me, uh, is an external module written in Python, uh, which is more or less a direct port of the POC, which saved us a ton of time versus porting it to Ruby. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the GPU miner denial service, uh, which is a community uh, contribution, are uh, Cold Stone modules. So hopefully over this rent, we'll be celebrating the first land of our uh, of a community uh, Python module, which is a pretty big step forward uh, for the project. Um, and also the Sharknado scanner that landed is super high performance. And given time, I will be demoing it today. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Adam. Next up are the script kitties. Anyone online who'd like to uh, speak to these? Sure. Assume you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Excellent. Cool. Uh, Jeffrey did a terrific job. There was a small little bug that kept creeping up in fast systems for Baseline Builder, and uh, Jeffrey squashed that so we can now do Baseline Builders for a bunch of stuff. That's in addition to some other changes that were made so you can build multiple ranges. Uh, right now, I'm working on some changes to automated scripting so that we can actually do some serious, like, changes to Windows services for entire ranges of VMs so that we can go ahead and really quickly switch together and get a whole testing range the way we'd like it. Kind of the inter eternal blue catch for this last week was, was a bit of an impetus for that, as well as the AV range. It'd be wonderful for us to be able to turn on Windows Defender across an entire test range, update the signatures, and then launch tests against it. Or to, you know, for example, turn on SMBV1, or auto login, or UAC, or any number of Windows services that we can do that. Uh, hopefully, I'll have that soon. I'm unfortunately I was going to demo it today, but I've, I've dug into some of the tests, and it's just not 100% yet. Uh, the other thing is uh, did some on-the-fly changes for Eternal Blue testing for the test system. We ran into some issues testing it because Eternal Blue has some razor-thin timeouts. For services on Windows systems uh, that we kind of had to work around. Uh, Brent, did you want to add anything to that? Um, no, actually, I don't still need to waste on the AV, so I'll go a whole lot of that. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Moving on, abnormal form. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so we've been doing uh, kind of a two-pronged effort. Um, Chris has been working on um, tidying up all of our uh, code that we've got written so far um, and getting that ready to get merged into the public master repo. Um, we've, uh, you may have already seen we've got, uh, we, we've officially called that the Metasploit 5 development branch now and the, there's a new banner and everything. Um, so uh, pretty soon you're going to start seeing PRs um, for actual new features that come along with that. Um, so uh, look for those uh, being put up fairly soon. Um, there's been, we had a lot of uh, debug code and I don't know, just bad things that we did in the name of speed. So um, we're fixing those up and it should look a lot better once it actually gets put into public. Um, and then uh, uh, Matthew and I have been working on uh, adding in the remaining CRUD operations to the API that we still um, have been uh, lacking um, uh, specifically that's uh, updates deletes and um, searching query searching for uh, uh, any objects that you're um, pulling in uh, I'm specifically working on loot and he's working on um, on hosts um, those are uh, pretty much done we just have a couple things to wrap up and um, 
then we'll move on to the last few. And once those are all done, once we've got all those uh, data models done, we should be about done with uh, setting up the API. So then we can move on to more fun things. What what are the um, APIs? <coughs> what are the um, data? I guess elements that are left to convert to this model. Um, services, um, notes, tags. Um, I'm pulling up the actual list right now. It's just what I can remember. Okay. Um, huh. Volumes. Um, yeah, right? volumes is another one. Um, and creds as well. Creds are already converted uh, for read and create, but update and delete need to be um, added in. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks. All right, thank you, James. Yep. Next are the Flatlanders. That's right. Um, I'll, run, I'll go on this one. So, yeah, uh, Ruby SMB progress continues to be made. We added support for NetBIOS session service, which is uh, port 139. Also landed some uh, initial DC RPC functionality with uh, SRV SVC, NetShare um, Net Enum All, which is a mouthful for me anyway. <clears throat> so that's very cool. Uh, metal extension loader, Swift Keylogger, macOS extension progress continues. I got over uh, yesterday. I've got a. I could do a small work in progress demo at the end if, if, if folks are interested. Um, and uh, you and I, Sunday last week, worked on some backlog issues yep. for, for uh, mostly related to commercial uh, products. So that was cool. Plowing forward. All right, sounds good, Pierce. Now it's time for demos. Okay. Uh, so just before the demo meeting last week, we landed the uh, AT&T Open Proxy Sharknado scanner thing. Uh, and it's written in Python. It uses uh, an interesting property of the external module uh, interface where each instance of the module is run in a separate process uh, to help us get a little bit of extra scalability. Um, so normally, whenever you run a scanner in Metasploit, uh, the threads option doesn't help if what you're uh, talking to will uh, receive your connection right away and respond right away, and you don't spend a whole lot of time waiting for it to do some long computation. Uh, but since we're running all of these scanners in separate processes, uh, each thread here will oversee a separate process, uh, allowing them to do actual work in parallel. Um, I've got our hosts set up here to be a slash 22 uh, plus a single IP that is vulnerable. Uh, the slash 22 here is a uh, web server I've got set up that has Keep Alive turned on uh, even for errors. So when we send uh, the weird binary bytes required to scan for this, it'll send the 500 and then it will just sit there with the connection open, which is generally pretty nightmarish. Uh, if you're a scanner, uh, but for us, it's not too bad. We we get the response. Uh, we'll wait to see if it has more stuff, but when it doesn't, we'll close the connection ourselves. Uh, so if we just run, we see that that one matches. We can't connect to the routing addresses uh, that are specially reserved. Uh, but this is a lot of output. If the match was buried somewhere in here, it would be difficult to see but we have a new addition to the external module API where it shows up in Volms, uh, which allows you to do automated stuff uh, around it uh, versus having to scrape all the output either with the script or with your eyes or whatever. Um, that's pretty much it. Hi, quick question. Yep. Um, I saw that there were two hosts options in the data store when you typed um, info earlier. Um, yes. Um, that is an unfortunate side, or uh, when I typed options, uh, that is an unfortunate side effect of the current data store. Mm -hmm. um, they are aliased. It's actually, they're aliased to the same thing, but because they have different descriptions, I think it is a little confusing for now. Oh, okay, so the, the description is part of the, I guess, the key for the for the option. So that they have two different descriptions, they end up showing up twice, right? If you register it twice, yeah. Okay, got it. But because they have the same key, compares to the same 
uh, because the data store is case insensitive. Mm -hmm. um, while when you list them, you get two, when you try to access or set, you end up accessing or setting its alias to the same option. Okay. Yeah. So it's only half broken. All right, any other questions for Adam? And you saw that we were able to do the uh, 10,025 hosts or the 1,025 hosts in just about the time it took for a single one to time out. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Neat. Cool. Yeah. OK, so uh, real quick here, what I've got going, um, I will embiggen. Bar, bar, bar. Uh, this will be the most interesting one, so I'll embiggen it most. Um, so I've, I've been poking along on the, this. Uh, there's a Swift uh, keylogger for Mac OS um, that uh, we uh, available on GitHub that we're modifying or you know, adding value to, I guess, whatever. So it would make it work with uh, Metal anyway, because we we'd like more Metal extensions, our POSIX interpreter. And so uh, what we've done here is uh, I've got it's just to just to start over from scratch here. Uh, I'm going to start uh, MSF console, and you can see it's going to execute just a <coughs> excuse me standard set of commands to uh, start the multi handler, um, set the payload to be uh, reverse TCP, and set my L host. So we'll get that going. Uh, in my main window, this is a, a Ubuntu VM we're running on MSF console, and then because the keylogger targets OS X, um, I'm my target is actually the host OS in this case. So the VM is going to be listening for our POSIX interpreter payload to connect back. So I'm going to run that here in this window. Uh, I'm running metal, and we've got some debug turned on, so it'll spit out some extra messages about what it's doing. Uh, not particularly important, so I won't bother in beginning that. At this point, we have a interpreter session. Yay. So what can we do? We can type load-l to see what's available. Ah, there's a sniffer module, and oh, there's this keylogger one. So let's load the keylogger. Okay, and prior to doing this, I'm going to remove files that the key, key logger uh, drops here. So just to be all oh, big in this one too, we can look at it in a minute. Um, so load the key logger. Success, yay. So, all right, let's see what that means. So we can see now that there's a set of key logger commands that are available, um, kind of usual paradigms where you could start the key logger, stop the key logger, get the status of it if it's logging or not. Um, Retrieve data, uh, download it to the to your uh, console uh, framework side, uh, or release it if you're not actually interested and don't want to deal with it. So, for example, uh, keylogger status should say that, hey, it's currently inactive. Great. <coughs> so, when we start it, it should say, hey, keylogger capture started. Yay. Status should be now is active. Yay. Okay, so let's look at, now that we got that running, um, let's take a look at here, and we should be able to see that within, in the temp directory on my uh, MacBook, there's a, there's a new, actually I should do, yeah, temp. There's a directory called data that has a number of subdirectories in there. And it'll, so, so this, this, this Swift keylogger also, in addition to keylogging, tells you application start, stop, and also devices that were, uh, had been discovered by the, the system or have been removed. Uh, in this case, uh, I have started the keylogger, but this is the work in progress part, is, is I've been reconciling the event loop of uh, Metal with the event loop built into what the Swift uses. Um, at the moment, the keylogger is initializing and doing one pass through, but, but I need to get it to keep coming back to check you know, for the events and everything. So that's the part I'm working on. And what, what you would normally see under here is if you, like, if you go into your browser and type something in the URL, like you're going to search for, you know, plastic buckets or something, you type that in, you'll see a new file show up um, in subdirectories here that describe, oh, there were key, key logging on the Google Chrome application or Safari or Firefox, whatever browser you're using, and then a text file of the, the, the data it saw there. Um, so, uh, and then when you're done, you should be able to come, you know, when you decide you're done key logging, you should be able to come up here and either do a, a dump, which would allow you to keep, uh, keep logging and just get the current data or to, to just to do a stop and a dump, so it says stop logging, and and then you can retrieve the data. Or if you just kind of decide you don't want to see the data, you could just do a release and the data goes away. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. 
So, quick question. Yeah. You, you, you use the word Swift keylogger a lot. Can you tell us what Swift is and why you would, why that, what has to do with keyloggers? <laughs> why, so, why Swift? Why is it? What is Swift and why? Uh, why, why Swift? Why, what is Swift? That's, that sounds like a really deep question. Uh, Swift is programming language, popular, uh, it's Apple's creation, from mm -hmm. what I understand. And uh, you can use it to write iOS or Mac OS applications. Um, it's kind of the, as I say, the successor to Objective-C, maybe, mm -hmm. that they like people um, to be using that. Um, the, you know, the short answer on the why is, well, we found a keylogger that was written in Swift. But okay. I, if, if you, I would, so, I would, so why not write a keylogger in C? Is there a reason why on, on Mac you couldn't write a keylogger in C? Uh, you know, some of the av uh, availability, some of the objects that, that yeah. the OS provides, yeah. yeah. So there's like a bunch of uh, APIs that are missing unless you write it in Swift. Right so on. it has to be written in another language just to access the underlying system calls yeah. and things to, to actually hook into OSX at that loop. Right? So one more way that Apple kind of coerce programmers to down that path of using their languages, yeah. You yeah. could uh, call those from C with a little bit of work, uh, but it would look extremely sketchy because yeah. very few <laughs> application programs are actually written in C. Yeah, so, so by, by using the normal Apple way, you look a lot less suspicious. Less right? obvious. Yeah. 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 yeah, hooking something strange. Yeah, and so, so speaking of hooking, so it, the route I took on this one was to, uh, I, we actually link the uh, metal um, uh, library in uh, as, as an object in with, with the Swift it, so this, the execution is still a Mako 64 Swift application, uh, but it has this library statically linked in so that we can take advantage of the TLV stuff that's already in there and, and not duplicate that. So question, does silence yeah. detect it? It hasn't detected on my system. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'll, put, good. I'll put it that way. I haven't had it flagged yeah. yet. Silence is definitely running because I see it gobbling up my memory. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Nice. So so that's that's the current current work in progress. And so this is our first non-Windows keylogger implementation, right? Or do uh, we have one for Linux? I, don't oh man now I don't even I think we have one for Linux or we have one that was PR and maybe got kind of run around uh, at mm -hmm. this point I'd have to go look yeah we should check that out yeah. I think this might be the first one we've ever yeah. had it may be exciting stuff nice yeah All right. great job yeah. Pierce thank you very much for uh, demoing we thank have you. one for Android keylogger for Android yeah hey thank you Jeffrey. excellent.